Hey everyone, it's Ed again, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to program the Go Build a Starter Bot for the FTC 2025-2026 season. I hope this video serves as a guide to help you get your robot up and running, or as an example of how to kind of approach a robot from scratch and program it. So that said, uh, I'm going to need a robot, so let's, uh, let's try this. Great, that worked. I'm here on my floor with a robot. This is the Go Build a Starter Bot for this year's season. This robot has one, two, three motors, plus one, two servos, and all that can be programmed and wired on a single control hub. So you do not need an expansion hub if all you have is this. Next, I'm gonna open up my driver hub and show you how I'm gonna configure this robot. Okay, let's configure the control hub. I'm gonna hit the hamburger menu, configure robot, new, control hub, control hub, motors. My zero motor is a GoBuilda 5203, and that's my left motor. My right motor is on port 1, it's another 5203 motor, and my launcher is on port 2. I'll click done. Next I'll do the servos. Port 0 has a continuous rotation servo, and that's my left servo. Port 1 is also a continuous rotation servo, and that's my right servo. Click done, I'll click done, I'll click done, I'll click save, give it a name, click done, click OK, and I'll click activate. Go home, you can see my config is now active, so I'm ready to program the robot. Okay, I'm connected to my robot here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is open a web browser and go to 192.168.43.1 colon 8080. And when I do that, I get the web interface for programming and managing the robot. I like this because I get a bit more screen space and I can test the robot remotely. So I can click on blocks create a new op mode and call it ed pelop and use the sample of basic op mode and it's going to create my template here and this is the start of our code the first thing i want to tackle is the drivetrain get the robot driving so i'm going to go to actuators dc motor and i'm going to grab this block right here we typically with a robot like this have to invert either the left side or the right side in this case i have to do the left side if the robot's driving backwards or inverted or anything like that, you can always change which motor this is and that might solve it. Next, we're gonna do some math. We need to take the joystick inputs here and turn them into motor inputs. And smarter people than me figured out what math that is and I'm just gonna copy it. So the way that works is we're gonna create a variable. I'm gonna start with uh, forward and another one called turn. And I'm gonna set Grab a set block here and put it right here where it says put loop blocks here. What are we going to set forward to? Well, we're going to grab the gamepad input. So we go to gamepad. I'll get gamepad one dot left stick Y. And if this is my gamepad, this will be my left stick Y. This will be my right stick X. Those are the values I'm going to use. I'll copy this block with control C. I'll paste it with control V and I'll change this to turn. This will be right stick X. So now I have how much my driver wants to drive forward and how much they want to turn. We now need to turn that into values for the motors. So we're gonna do that starting with a DC motor block. We're gonna grab set power. What do we set the power to? We're gonna do some math and we're gonna say it's going to be equal to forward plus turn for the left motor. Control C copy, control V paste. And we'll go forward minus turn for the right motor. And then what I think I also want to do is add some outputs to the driver station. So we'll go to utilities. I'll go to telemetry and we'll add a telemetry right there. I'll call this forward. I'll copy this block here, paste it. And I'll copy all this and paste it again and change this to turn. And that'll just help me do some debugging if I need to. And I think that's all we need to get started. So we'll go ahead and save this. I'll plug in my controller here and we'll give it a shot. I'm gonna select my code as Ed Telop. I click in it and I click start. And we see we have our outputs on the screen here. So as I change, as I push on the sticks, those values will change. And we can observe the robot. So I'm going to push forward on the stick we see our robot goes that way. I push back and it goes the opposite way, so that's good. Uh, it is going the wrong direction. I want this to go forward and it's going backwards for me. 
so we'll have to fix that. I push left on the other stick and it turns counterclockwise. I push right and it turns the other way. So that all almost looks good other than that forward direction being wrong. And if I look at my screen here, this is why I output the values to the screen. If I push forward on my, on my controller, I see I'm actually getting a negative number. So I think if I invert that control input, then we should be good. The other thing is if I push forward all the way, the robot is rather jerky, so I think we're gonna do some speed limiting as well. Okay, let's start with fixing that forward direction. I think the simplest way to do this is go to math and grab this negative sign. I'm gonna drag it right there because when I push forward on the stick, I'm actually getting a negative number. And what this is doing is it's multiplying this value by negative one here. So when I push forward instead of negative one, I'll get one and that'll just update these two values right there. Or the next thing I wanna do is limit the speed because typically driving at full speed right out the get go is a little less controlled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new variable. I'm gonna call this drive factor. And the very first thing I'm gonna do in initialization is set the drive factor to 0 0.5, okay? I think the simplest way to actually use this is to go to math, multiply, and I'm gonna grab this, put it there, drop this back in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply my gamepad input by my drive factor. So what this is doing is it's artificially limiting my control input to limit how fast my robot can drive. And that sounds a little counterintuitive, but it's not it's no good to drive a robot so fast you can't control it. So sometimes a little bit of lower speed actually makes it more controllable. I'll do the same thing for my other input here, and that should be good there. But what if I actually do want to uh, do want to increase the speed for a moment, like a like a turbo button? That's often really useful too. A cool way to do this is I'm gonna grab this if else if else. I'm gonna take that and put it right there. So I'll go to gamepad, gamepad one dots, let's go left bumper. If this button is pressed, what do we wanna do? Let's make this our, uh, our turbo button. So I'll set my drive factor to a number. Let's set that to one for turbo. And copy with control C, paste with control V, change that to right bumper. Copy this, paste that, and let's change this to 0 0.25. And finally, if neither of those are pressed, let's just set our drive factor to uh, 0 0.5. And we save that, and let's give that a test. Okay, I've got my code loaded up again, so I'm going to hit init and start. And now when I push forward on that stick, my robot's going the way I want. When I push back, it's going the correct way. Push left, it goes clockwise. Right, it goes counterclockwise. If I push it full speed, you see it's not tipping as much anymore, and it's actually a lot easier to control this. And now if I press my right bumper, that's gonna be my fine precision mode. We see the robot is now moving slower. You can see the speed difference when I release that bumper. And now we can go the other way and test the turbo mode. Forward, hold the turbo button. All right, that's super fast, almost too fast. Now release, and now it's back to normal speed. Now that the robot is driving, the next thing I wanna do is program the launcher motor. And all I wanna do is say, when the B button is pressed, uh, spin up this wheel to a particular speed. So I'll grab a if statement under logic, and I'll put this after all my drive code. In fact, let me do comments, this'll be drive code, and this will be like operation code. So I'll go if what, if our gamepad one dot B. So I'll go to DC motor, and I think I can do a power block and just change this to launcher motor, and we need to give a value right here. Now I can enter some value here. It's got one by default. I could enter whatever number I want. Uh, what I'll caution you with is if you have a lot of code, searching for little numbers like this can be hard to, to find. So what I'll do is I'll create a new variable called launcher speed, and we'll set it there. But then we need to then we need to give it a default value. So we'll go variables, set launcher speed, 
to what, to a value. Uh, let's just go full beans. Let's just go all the way to one. And that way, this is very easy to find. We don't have to dig through our code. I'll also do another telemetry block. So I'll copy this one, control C, control V. And I'll call this launcher. And we'll change this to launcher speed. With all that added, I'll click save. And let's give it a test. All right, I'm gonna initialize my code and click play. And I can still drive, I can still rotate. And now when I press that B button, the motor spins up. However, it's occurring to me that I have not programmed an actual stop button, which I probably need. So let's, uh, let's fix that. All right, so silly me, I forgot to have the uh, stop button or a way to turn it off once I hit go. So I'm gonna change this from an if to an if else. So I'll go logic instead of if, I'll go if else. I'll drag this back up here. I'll drag this here. I'll delete that block by clicking and press delete. And then if B has been pressed, set the power to our launcher speed. Otherwise, let's actually just set it to zero. And that'll mean when I'm holding B, the launcher will be spinning. Otherwise, it'll turn off. And uh, let's, let's test that. Okay, this time I'm going to go ahead and press B. And this time I, I heard it spin down, so let me press and hold. We can hear the motor spin, and when I release, it stops, and that's what I want. The other thing we need to do is check the direction to make sure it's actually spinning the correct way. So we need this wheel spinning this way to launch the game piece up. So if I feel this motor very gently, because it is spinning, it feels like it's going the wrong way. It's rotating this way. So I can either give that speed a minus one instead of one, or I can invert the direction of the motor. And I'm gonna do that because it makes more sense to me. To invert that launcher speed, again, we could say minus one here. I don't like that quite as much to me. One should be the launching direction and minus one should be the other direction. So what I'll do is I'll copy this block here and say my launcher motor is also reversed. And we'll save that and give it a test. All I've done is change the direction of the motor. So when I press B, I hear it spin up. On a release, it still stops. And I'm gonna gently feel that motor because it is spinning, so you do have to be careful um, and see what direction it's going. And that's trying to push my hand up. So that tells me the motor is spinning the correct way, which is what I want. So the last thing I need to do is actually program the little servos down there and there to feed the game piece in. Before we actually program the servos, we need to make sure they are set in the correct mode. These are the Go Build a Dual Mode servos, which means they can either be programmed to be a positional servo or a continuous servo. And to do that, we need to zap it with a little programmer board. So I'm going to be using this. This is the Go Build a Dual Mode programmer, and it comes with a battery cable. So we'll go red to plus, black to minus, and then we'll take one of our servos, unplug it from there. I'm going to plug it in with black to minus red to plus, and whatever color is left to the signal, which is S. I'm gonna give my board some power, and when we plug it in, we'll see the lights flash, like that. Next, I'm gonna flip the switch from S mode to C mode. And then I press and hold P for five seconds, and we'll see the lights flash when it's ready. So they all flash, so it's now programmed to be in continuous mode, so that one is now good to go. I'll plug that servo back in, and I'll move this a little bit so you see the other servo. Unplug this one, plug this in. Again, black to minus, red to plus. The remaining wire is signal. Press and hold P. Lights will flash. There's the lights. So we'll plug that back in. And now that the both of those servos are for sure in the correct mode, we're ready to actually program them. To do that, I need another button on my controller. Um, let's go A. All right, so I'm going to need another if statement. Let's go logic. Similar to the launcher motor, let's do an if else, which is this one here. If what, if gamepad one dot, I said, I think A. So if A is pressed, then what? We need to spin up the servo. So let's go to CR servo. Uh, we will need this direction inverted for at least one of them. Let's 
start with that as a starting point. CR servo dot power for the left servo to one. I'll right click duplicate for the right servo to one. If A is pressed, then this will spin them both at full speed. And then let's duplicate this again. And if they aren't pressed, let's set the speed to zero. And I need to make sure that this is left servo and right servo. And yeah, let's, uh, let's try that. All right, now let's test our servo code. So we bound it to button A. When we don't press A, they don't move. That's good. When I press A, I hear and see both of them moving. And when I release A, they both stop. Perfect, so now I can press B. Our launcher spins up. I press A, and those spin. That all looks functional. I can still drive forward, backwards, in a fairly controlled manner, and I can turn left, right, and I even got a turbo and a slow precision mode. And I think that's, uh, that's about it. Okay, so in this video, I showed you how to program an arcade drive. I showed you how to program a launcher motor that spins when we press a button, as well as how to program continuous rotation servos that also spin when we press a different button. And I think that combines into a good amount of functionality for this robot. It's not the most advanced program in the world, but it's simple, and I'll have some link for an image of the code in the description down below. As always, I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.